Thanks. Hi, family. How are you guys? It's Jatan again. I'm back with a new recipe with jams. So I know you guys have been tuning in, and I so appreciate it. Uh, definitely like it and share it. Um, I'm back with another recipe. So today's recipe is going to be blackberry lemon uh, jam. So I, if you come with me over here this way, family, right this way, right this way. So if you look here, I've got our, we've got several cups of beautiful blackberries that I prepared here. They've been rinsed and clean. Okay, so they've been dried, they're ready to go. We also have here a nice, beautiful bit of lemon. So we've got our uh, lemon peel, the rinds, okay, and they've been julienne cut. We've got our bits of lemon here that's going to give wonderful flavor to our blackberries. Question. Question. Sure. What does julienne cut mean? So julienne is just thin strips. Okay. Which is thin strips. And see, I'll show you guys. So if you look in, if mm -hmm. you see in here, those skinny strips, those are julienne cut. Some people with really, really good knife skills, they can get them even skinnier than that. But for the most part, they're like skinny strips. Okay. Okay. That's a julienne cut. They just and that just gives the um, the jam a nice, pretty appearance. Okay. You'll see bits of lemon, and you'll see like the bits of the um, the lemon uh, peel in it, and it'll have a nice, pretty strip in there. Um, also, if you come here and look, I've got a cheesecloth. This is a cheesecloth, and mm -hmm. this contains my pith, and it's got a few seeds in here, lemon seeds. So, um, citrus fruits in the pith and the seeds and the membranes that come on the fruit actually have a uh, natural pectin. Pectin is a, a material that's naturally found in citrus fruits. Um, and it is, works like a thickening agent, but just as a backup, we also have a uh, pectin here, which is a powder pectin. I'm going to be using these to get our jam nice and thick to the consistency that we want it. And so this is pectin? This is powdered pectin. And oh, wow. this is um, our cheesecloth here. Cheesecloth? That's a cheesecloth. What would yeah. no, this is a cloth. <laughs> right. This oh, is wow. the cheesecloth right here. And I'll give you guys an example of why. Why do they call it a cheesecloth? You know, that's a good question. I'll have to get back to you guys on why they call it cheesecloth. I think they use it uh, um, when they used to make cheese by hand. Um, they use this cloth, I think, to kind of uh, separate the curds. And like one of those things for like wound care or something. <laughs> it does look like gauze, but yeah, yeah. this is cheese cloth, see? Okay. Yeah, this, I think, was used in uh, cheese making. Okay. But uh, anyway, um, that's our cheese cloth. Okay. Okay. And so this is going to be what we're going to use to maintain uh, a nice, almost like a tea bag. You're going to sit this in your, uh, in our bag. <laughs> And here, let me go ahead and uh, get rid of the seeds on here. So we're going to get rid of the seeds. So right now you're getting rid of the seeds. That's yeah, just the little ones that are left over so they don't keep sticking to our cheesecloth bag. Because we have all the seeds we need in and here. You, so. And you cut the pith off and put it in there. Correct. The pith has been cut off. And the pith is just so, uh, whoever doesn't know, the pith is just that white uh you know, that white uh, cushiony part that you see on oranges and citrus fruits that have, have rinds and peels. That's all that is. It's just the white part of your lemon or the white part of your orange. And the zest is the skin itself. And the zest is going to be the actual color, the outside color, your skin on there. So the yellow part or the orange part, or if you're dealing with a grapefruit, that pinkish orange part is what is your zest. That's the zest. And then the white part, when you get down to the white layer, that's the pith. Okay. okay? So are we ready? Yeah? All right, so let's do this. So we're gonna first start off with putting our raspberries in. Okay, so we're gonna put our raspberries down in here. And like I said, we're probably working with about four or five cups of black res, I mean not raspberries, but blackberries. And so now, after we get this down, we're gonna add in our lemon. So let's go and get our lemon. Okay. Now add our lemon. What were the uh, before you go into that? What were the ratios to blackberries to pith, and before you add that? Uh, for the pith. Yeah. And or the uh, lemon to the pith. Like, like all, like, like how, how? I guess the question I want to ask is, like, how much, how many of the ingredients do you use? Like, 
how many cups of blackberries that you use, uh, how much pilfed and lemon zest that you use in this bowl. So um, typically, I kind of eyeball it, but what I did was I used the um, I used the material for about five small lemons, and then here this is a probably about five about four to five cups of blackberries and it could be a little bit more but I use about two boxes of the you know the the uh, store boxes that you find there the little cartons yeah so I've used two of those of the medium size and I use about uh, let's say about four or five lemons so she so you use four to five lemons so you use four to five lemons to add this zest and lemon zest and the pith and then for the blackberries you had about five cups of blackberries correct yeah so okay. it's about four or five lemons um and we also have about four to five uh cups of blackberries okay so now that we've got that in we're gonna go on and we're gonna add some water uh to our mixture so we come this way okay mm -hmm. you just add yourself water here okay and you do cold water Cold water? How yeah, many cups? Water. Just eyeball it? Yeah, I'm just eyeballing it today. So typically you probably add the same number of cups for the uh, for the blackberries that you have. So probably about four to five cups of water Okay. Um, for your fruit here. So we're going to go ahead and get our fire on. We're going to turn up about here. Went to about eight and a half. So what you're going to do is you're going to cook your fruit down. Okay, and then as your fruit becomes soft, I'm gonna then we're gonna add our other ingredients, um, like our sugar and our pectin. Just just for those who don't want to see it later, I mean we'll definitely post that later, just so you can see what it looks the aftermath right. of this recipe will look like. Typically, how much sugar would they need to add once it's cooked down, and mm -hmm. yeah, what what else do they need? You might add? need to add about four cups. Um, but what I always do, I, I like to taste my recipe as I go. Um, my advice would probably be if you're doing this at home, it would probably be to sugar it to your taste because some people like their jams a little bit sweeter, some like them not so sweet. So I would probably um, go by the rule of thumb is to start off with maybe like a cup or a cup and a half of sugar and then taste your, taste your combination. If you're satisfied with the sweetness, then add more, you know, add or take away, essentially. You know, um, if, you, if that's enough for you, then you know what? You can leave it as it is. If you prefer to have something a little bit sweeter, then feel free to go ahead and add some more. A lot of times uh, when working with citrus fruits, especially if you're working with oranges, it's better to add a little bit more sugar because oranges tend to have that bitter taste because of the peel. So that's just that's just me. Um, you know, you do what uh, tastes better for your taste buds. Again, it's you know, there's no set rule um, on how much sugar you should use. So the people may, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. Yeah, for sure. But yeah. uh, but a common question that people do ask is, uh, once you have the the ingredients uh, cooked, how long will it typically take for the fruit to cook down? Until it's until you're ready to add other ingredients. Mm, it may take the fruit maybe about mm, close to thirty minutes to probably cook down nice and soft because you want your fruit nice and soft. Um, what I plan to do with my blackberries, some of them I'm going to crush them a little bit, and some I may um, blend it. So some I'm going to um, really really take some out of the blend. I'll show you that later. I'm going to take a few of those raspberries, or excuse me, blackberries out, and I'm going to um, chop them up and grind them. They're very soft, and then others I'm going to leave whole bits. Why, well, two questions. Why are you going to do that, and how do you know if they are overcooked or undercooked? Well, it just kind of depends. When it comes down to this process, it kind of just depends on how you prefer your um, jam to be. If you like bits of fruit in your jam... Um, then, you know, you want to kind of leave some of them, uh, firm or leave some of them whole in there. So you have like bits of fruit inside. I personally prefer a little combination of both in the middle. I kind of like my jams to be, um, to have that jelly consistency, but also have bits of fruit inside. So I typically do both. So that way, as you're biting into 
your jam, you're spreading it on your toast, or spreading it on whatever it is that you're going to be eating it with, you know, a nice hot biscuit, put that on there, you taste your jam, you get this, you know, wonderful taste in your mouth with uh, this beautiful jam with bits of fruit. Uh, sometimes you can even taste the seed. So you have this wonderful uh, flavor, and then you also have good texture. So it adds good texture going on. So, and you said for yours, you like to add chia seeds to yours. And the Sometimes I'll add chia seeds. Today's recipe, I won't be adding chia seeds only because of the fact that the blackberries themselves do have their own seeds in them. Good thing is also uh, when you're cooking uh, fruits that do have seeds in them, like, uh, like um, blackberries, the seeds do get softer, so you don't have to worry that the seeds are going to be super soft. I just think that it adds a nice rustic texture um, to your, uh, jam. So that's how I'm going to be preparing mine. I'm going to do it, um, partially crushed, um, with that maintain bits of fruits. And then some of it, I'm going to blend it to get more of like a puree, um, out of my jam. And that's going to help to thicken that. And it's all going to come together real nice. Awesome. So basically right now for the folks that are looking at home, mm -hmm. you're saying, Hey Chanel, Hey Tamika, Hey Miss Crane. So right now you're saying, that basically you're going to cook this down for about 30, 40 minutes, Correct. let the fruit get to, a, I guess, to a softened state. Yes. Then after that, the next step is you're going to add sugar. Correct. And you're going to add that sugar to taste. Correct. Now, halfway, now at that point, in the halfway mark, once my fruit is starting to cook down, that's when I'm going to, at that halfway mark, I'm going to um, take some of my blackberries out. And I'm going to parade part of it. And then I'm going to add that, which I parade. I'm going to put that back. Well, into you know, for the, the people the like mixture. me that does, doesn't know what parade mean, what does it mean when you say you want to parade half of it? Puree just simply means that you're going to be doing like a blend. to so blend it all together where it's like a liquid type of consistency. Um, I tend to, and I'll show you on here. These are the settings like here. Let me take a look here. Uh, sorry about my countertop. We were working on some things here. But if you look at the settings on um, on this blender, you have low, medium, and high. You have smoothie, and then you have food chop. You have pulse, and then, you, and then this is our on switch. This feature, the pulse feature, is what I like to use because it, it you can push it and stop and push it and stop, and it allows for you to pulse until you feel like it's at the texture that you want it. That way you don't hit the button and it just blends and then you're like, oh my God, I didn't mean for it to go that far. By pulsing it, you can stop it in between until you see that it's where you want it to be, okay. then you can stop. Okay. So that's the feature that I prefer uh, to use. So okay. I'm gonna go ahead and be stirring our mixture here. Okay. Okay, so excuse me, I'm gonna reach for Ooh. spoon here. So. We got our beautiful, beautiful. It smells so good. Yes, it smells amazing, Get folks. Get that little guy out of amazing. here. Amazing. Oh, we have our beautiful lemon. It smells so good, you guys. So good. Well, this is going to make a beautiful combination. Um, another reason why I probably would, you know, definitely do more than uh, one to two cups of raspberry. Excuse me, I don't know why I have raspberries on brain. Uh, maybe that's why I probably maybe need to do a raspberry jam because I keep saying raspberries. <coughs> but um, another reason why I would probably add more sugar um, because blackberries are not very sweet at all. They're, they're not very sweet. Um, I think these are actually more tart than raspberries. So uh, blackberries tend to be a little bit bitter and then you have the sourness from the lemon too. Mm -hmm. um, which is going to add a nice dimension to the flavor. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely probably do more um, sugar, a little mm -hmm. bit more sugar in this recipe. Again, it's up to you, but I'm going to be using a bit more sugar today um, to help balance but out those flavors. Just old. Uh, just getting out of old. A little bit, yeah. <clears throat> and just catching any, um, keeping my eye out to catch any little seeds that might have uh, slipped past in the um, washing process. So as you can see, as I'm stirring this, you can see those beautiful julienne strips of lemon. See that, see those? Yep. So that's gonna look gorgeous in your jam once you're done. See, and then you've got, you know, you've got your nice bits of uh, lemon there, see? 
So in that nice combination, you can yeah. already see that the heat's starting to break down the blackberries. They're starting to color our water. So that's going to look really, really nice. It tastes nice too. Yeah, it's going to taste really nice. And so nice what type flavor. of texture uh, should one expect when they eat this jam? Like, and, and what type of taste should they expect? <laughs> um, well, once you're done, um, you know, adding all your ingredients, texture-wise, again, it just kind of depends on whether you want to blend everything up together. I tend, like I said, I prefer personally not to do too much blending um, with this because I feel like it kind of takes away from that, that um, fruit, you know, that nice texture, that nice... Um, rustic taste of fruit you know real fruit it's like it's more because at that point you know it kind of reminds you more of eating a uh, jelly or like a, a like a spread yeah fruit spreads um have more natural fruit and have more fruit content than a jelly would um a lot of people when they make jellies they may tend to um extract all the fruit flavorings all the color and everything out of it um, and some people may choose to add a little bit of flavorings. Um, and then after that, they add in their thickening agents and it's more of like a, a, a jelly. That's what I think of when, it, when people say jelly. But when it comes to spreads, mar uh, uh, What's what I said? Uh, she said, love those pots. Thank you. <laughs> Chanel. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's Pioneer Woman. <laughs> Isn't Pioneer Woman? Yeah. From the TV little, show? Uh, I got my pioneer woman. She loves out. pioneer woman. She's the black pioneer woman, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, I love my uh, pioneer. She has a really, really cute set of uh, dishes and, and different kitchen accessories. So, um, so our water's starting to get colored here. So, which you'll see, like I said, a um, couple of minute, couple more minutes in as the fruit starts to cook down. See how beautiful that's starting to look already like our water is starting to turn pink see that guys and that's stuff from the berries that's from the berries so you'll have that beautiful blackberry flavor with the lemon so this should be nice and gorgeous mm, guys. That really looks gorgeous. Amazing. so it'll kind of have a, a jammy marmalade type of a yeah what well, that's a good question like what would be the difference between say this and like a marmalade a marmalade um jams i think are a little bit different in texture marmalades have more marmalades have more um whole fruit in, in my opinion i feel like marmalades have more fruits whole fruits in it or more chunky texture um and they also may be some people might say they're a little sweeter but in my opinion i think marmalades have a little bit more fruit in them I think like your level of fruit changes depending on what you're doing. Jams, mm, jams may not have as much. They're more in the middle between a jelly and a, marmalade. a jelly and a marmalade, or maybe like a spread and a marmalade. So it, it's it's different, um, different preparations. There's that. different levels to this thing, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so this is looking real, real yeah, wonderful. Wow, you guys see how far it's coming along. If you like it. Uh, please like and share this video. If you have any questions, ask away. So what's the so net? What's the next step in this process, babe? So again, my next step after this is smells so. This smells really good, you guys. I wish you guys had smell a vision. But um, yes. our next step in this, I think, is to go ahead and begin to put our sugars. Now that our fruit is starting to cook down and how many cups of sugar are we going to put in there i'm going to start off on the safe side i'm going to start off with a cup of sugar cup cup and a half of sugar first stir it around let it cook some more um, i'm going to taste it and see if it's at the sweetness level that i like um, or that i feel like it balances out these flavors pretty good um and then at that point i'll add as i feel like it may need oh, so that's awesome. what we're gonna that's what we're gonna that's why i said it's the safest bet to make sure you don't over sugar your um your product is to kind of go by taste taste it and see um and that will that's your trust your taste buds that'll tell you whether or not it's too sweet or whether or not you need to add uh take you know 
I take some away. Okay. We grab my sugar. We're gonna get our sugar from here. Okay. We've got our cup. This is our cup and our cup measure. It's our half cup. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add this mixture. Mm -hmm. So that's a cup of sugar. About a cup of sugar. Blend that all in. And sugar is really good too because the sugar helps to draw the juices out of your fruit. Like I don't know if you guys ever prepared like pie or like just think about when you make strawberries, right? You sprinkle that little bit of strawberries, you start off with fresh raw strawberries, mm -hmm. sprinkle some sugar on top, and then it's like magic. You'll go back in there a few hours later, and there's a bunch of juice in there. So that um, that is what I love about how sugar affects the fruit. Also, um, with, uh, you know, with this, it also helps to thicken. Like when I made my orange marmalade the other day, when I added sugar, that sugar kind of helped to um, get my thickening going. So, but today we're going to be using a combination of, of uh, pectin, powdered pectin, and we're going to also be using our cheesecloth with the natural pectin from... Well, skin, if you Memphis. guys have any questions, ask below. Questions, ask below. So, she's using cheesecloth today and, okay. and natural pectin yeah. as a thickening agent, correct? Right. Pectin is just a natural thickening agent. Uh, that's something that's found in fruit naturally. So why, a question, question someone may wonder, like why are you using pectin and why are you using cheesecloth? Why not like just not put those things in there at all? I mean, well, if somebody wanted to not use them, they could. But the only issue with that would be you probably won't get the consistency that you're looking for. You want, you need something to thicken it up. And like I said, um, although fruits have these things naturally, mm -hmm. they have them at different different amounts. So however much pectin is in the fruit, it may or may not be enough to thicken it by itself. Mm -hmm. So that's why um, people that you know create jams and things, they use pectin. Um, I just happen to save the pits and the seeds from the lemons because I'm going to use that in conjunction with my um, ready-made pectin in here to give us a nice uh consistency so so you so you you save the 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 pith mm -hmm. from the lemon Correct. as well as the seeds yes. from the lemon mm -hmm. to give it more to make it more thick Correct. okay right. to to extract the natural pectin from it also um also it makes it more organic Correct. more natural okay exactly. gotcha so we're going to do a little bit of a taste test Make sure we don't burn our mouth. It's really, really good. The husband should have had some of that. Boo. Yeah. Wow, that's he great. Booed me, guys. He booed me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's coming along pretty good. I'm probably gonna add some more as we go. Um, because like I said, I can still taste some of the bitterness with the uh with our lemon, so. I just burnt myself on the pressure cooker. Oh, are you okay? I'm fine. It's Lord. just a burn. It'll be all right. I, I survived. I'm sorry. You may not like it too good. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you guys have any further questions? You guys have any questions? Definitely ask me. You know, has this inspired anybody to do any jams or jellies? Like, has anybody thought about it or tried to make some uh, jams on your own? And if you so, let me know, like, what, you know, how did that work out for you? Nobody has a question. Any questions? Don't be shy. Don't leave me all help. I know Crystal, Crystal asked me earlier, and I had never heard of it, but she was talking about uh, a Ukrainian soup called borscht. I don't know if borscht? you're, I, I think it's borscht. borscht. Am I saying that right, Crystal? Borscht. Borscht. And she had asked me, had I heard of it? Oh, I guess I guess she was maybe alluding to us making that. But uh, like I said, I never heard of it. Is it like a fruit soup or something? Like a like a maybe like um, you know how they have like the the gazpacho because you know they have um, vegetable gazpachos and they have I think they have fruit gazpachos too where they make it out of like watermelon or fruit or melons. Did is you hear that, that? Like what that is? You hear the question, Crystal? 
you were yeah. some time to type that in. Yeah, find out somebody. Can somebody look that up? That sounds interesting. Look, look up. Uh, Cause I have fruit Gestapo or whatever you call it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Not yeah. Gestapo. That's something. That's somebody completely different. I'm <laughs> good, good shoe boy. What, 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 what you call it? Gaspacho. Gaspacho. Okay. I love Jesus it. Christ. That, Gestapo. That's like the secret police. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> We definitely don't want any, you know, Gestapo. Yeah, we don't want no Gestapo. So, <laughs> so I'm going to pull this out. Okay. So we're just going to rinse our blender out. Okay, so now now, what, now what are we doing in the process if, they, if they're wondering what's going on? So all I'm doing right now is just preparing my blender because as I said, part way through this process, I'm going to take uh, some of my blackberries or some of my mixer and I'm going to add it to the blender. You'll see how I'm going to pulse it. So I'll show you that right now. And you're doing that. Why? Because I would like to kind of diversify the texture um, in my fruit. Okay. So she wants, wants to diversify the texture in her fruit. Correct. So she's going to add some to the blender. Yes. And she's going to pulse it. And for those who missed it earlier, she said the reason that she's going to pulse it is because she doesn't want to over blend it right. and as you guys will see when you post it in the blender it'll go for a little while and then it'll stop it'll go for a little while and then it'll stop yeah and so, I, I'll, I'll show you guys that she's giving show it to you guys yeah i want i want this to be like this because you want to be able to spread your jam like if you got you know if you get something that has a bunch of whole raspberries or blueberries or whatever you know uh, type of a berry fruit in there how are you going to spread that like the last time i checked you know you definitely can't spread that so you want to it's a choke hazard yeah it's a choking hazard i want you to enjoy this it. not the you know <laughs> but you have a raspberry uh <laughs> or like how he, how he, how he how how blackberry killed <laughs> yeah exactly it's not good not good at all so no bueno yeah so we want to um we want to kind of get these down so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go over to the... So basically you're putting half of the mixture in the blender and right. keeping the other half to let it just complete. Cook down. Complete cook. Yeah, let it, let it down. cook okay. down. I may smash some of those, but okay. this will kind of give me a loose uh, consistency here. So we got that going. Bam! Baller! I'm going to blender here. Okay. We're going to get this in here. Okay. I'm going my bag out today. That ain't good for optics. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our pulse option. Let's see. See how that does it on and off and on and off? Beautiful. She said, real quick, so what's all in that pot? You got uh, you got lemon piffed in the pot. No piff. No, I'm sorry, not lemon piff. You got what do you got? Blackberries. You got blackberries, blackberries and lemon. And lemon. Correct. Just and blackberries and lemon. And a julian, right? Right. And they're julian strips. So these and julian are. Strips. This is your your piff. See those in the cheesecloth, along with the see that white stuff there. That's your piff. So this is what I took off of my. Can you limits. take one out so they can see it? If sure. they can see it clear, babe. Sure, sure. That way you can kind of know. So Chanel, to answer your question. It's the Juli the Julian or Julius? Julian. Julian strips of lemon. That's just a cut. Julian, all Julian refers to is just the type of cut. It's just a cut. It's just a stripping of something. When you cut it, you just slice it in thin strips. It's called a Julian. Julian style strips. Julian style strips and black beers are the See only thing that's in the pot. See, these are this is this white stuff that you get off of your oranges, your grapefruits, your lemons. The white part that's just underneath the yellow skin, this is called a pith. So this is a pith. This, along with the seeds and then the membranes from your uh, citrus fruit, contain natural uh, pectin. So oh, that, wow. that's what you're going to use to help thicken. So I'm going to drop this in the pot once we're ready to do our uh, pectin. Okay. So on this way. So we're going to put our puree blend back oh, into our pot here. Wow. We're going to add that back in. Oh, okay. really? <laughs> so look at how beautiful that looks. Yeah, it does look beautiful. See? That looks really gorgeous. It makes me want to cry. It's so beautiful. <laughs> so we're going to cook that on down. Okay. Some more. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna smash this up a little bit. So, Crystal, did you did you uh, find out that information? Yeah, I'm still very very curious about that. Is if that's some sort of a gazpacho? And we're talking specifically about the borscht. It almost the borscht. sounds like a meat. Yeah, it does sound like a meat. Yeah, because I've heard of borscht before. I just I never knew it was like a. That's a uh, Ukrainian dish. She was saying earlier. Whoa. Have you traveled to Ukraine? Or have you had much experience with uh, Ukrainian cuisine? I don't know if she's still on there. Cause she's not saying anything. Okay. We're almost there to the flavor that I'm I'm looking for. Almost. Oh, uh, Chanel said I can't wait to have our day of canning. <laughs> she said, "Hey, Krista says I'm totally useless." It's basically, she said, "Yes, it's like a beet base. It's a beet base soup, and you eat it with sour cream." Oh wow. Okay. Hey, Chanel, I don't no, answer that question. Like three, Chanel keep asking the same question. What? Chanel, I didn't say the same thing the whole time. It's, <laughs> Lord, Chanel, it's it's lemon. Leave her alone. <laughs> so what's in the pot is lemon, julian, julian, the julian cut lemon, and it's blackberries. And she took. Uh, the pureed version from the stuff of the cut and she poured it back in. So that's what's in the, in the pot right now, Chanel. And if you want to know why I'm uh, I'm still steering this, I'm, I'm steering it so that <laughs> Chanel way. Chanel laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you leave my sister alone. <laughs> Crystal says she'll send you a recipe. We also do carrot and ginger soup. Oh really? Oh, you should even told her ginger soup, uh, Crystal, because she loves ginger. Oh, I'm a, she like a I ginger har holic ginger. over here. Anything with lemon or I'm oh a, my god, I'm, yeah. I'm a total lemon head. I'm a lemon head, and I love ginger. She said, uh, "Friends, and you." Oh, Chanel said, "There's a delay." Okay. Ah, no wonder. Bad phone, bad. She said, "Nope, it's a cabbage soup." So you you're talking about the. Uh, the borscht, right, Crystal? Is a cabbage soup? Yeah, I'm a cabbage fanatic, so that's that's good. Well, she said. Have that. She said my friend is Ukrainian and taught us. Oh, I've never. You know what? I've never been a big. Um, I don't know. I've never been a huge cabbage fan myself. Like if it's not an egg rolls or something like that. I am. I love cabbage. <laughs> I don't eat too many of those. I, I love shame on you guys. Shame on and me. And the only other thing, well, I, they, they taste better than those. I call uh, Brussels sprouts. What, what, what's our nickname for Brussels sprouts? Because they the sort of like vegetables? the devil's vegetable. That's Brussels what those sprouts. things are. I call them the Satan's vegetables. That's Satan's. That's no that doubt. That's Satan <laughs> and okra. Oh, my God. That and okra is the worst. I just, I don't know. Yeah, I hate okra. You can't I hate, pay me to eat them. I hate Brussels sprouts. Like if you ask me to get some Brussels sprouts, you either trolling me or, or you being used by the devil. Because there's no way in the world I eat some. And my yeah, wife is like that too. I, I hate cannot. Brussels sprouts. They are the worst. I remember being made to eat okra as a child, and it was oh my yeah, god. Yeah, Chanel. Exactly, torture. Chanel. Chanel says it's disgusting. Exactly. I think I threw up in a plate. Yeah, Brussels like, sprouts are disgusting. That? She says she love okra. That's that Mississippi part of you coming out. I can't out. do it. I hate. Mm -hmm. I hate okra. I'm like, and Brussels she, sprouts are even worse to me. It's like it just tastes like something that should not be in your mouth. Yeah, for real, sir. Kevin loves Brussels sprout. What? No. Oh, no, Kevin. No. I think Ke we're gonna have to stop being friends. And Kevin tripping. Mm -mm, not at all. <laughs> Krista says it's delicious cabbage and beets. Very healthy. You should all try kombucha. Man, it's fun. You said kombucha. I've tried. She, she said we should try making kombucha. Kombucha. Okay, well, I'm scared to make kombucha because we might get people too drunk. We may, <laughs> we may mess up with the mixture and have people around here lit. <laughs> that means you are lightweight. Man, people, people be getting drunk, drunk, and we make kombucha because we might do it wrong and we end up make making it, uh, making moonshine. moonshine. <laughs> Got us in here, Chanel. Have to have That'll be the last thing that we want to hear. Like, like, man, like the, moonshine. like they, they supposed to be Christians. They over there making moonshine at their park in their bootlegging. <laughs> they up there bootlegging. That's so funny. I can't. Do that. I cannot. That's Straight the last thing that's gonna happen, man. I, I had somebody they sold. They sold me some bootleg, some moonshine liquor. Like what the oh, heck? I'm telling you. I knew it was something about them. They not. I knew it. <laughs> I knew they wasn't the same. Shameful, just shameful, y'all. Oh, Angela, she said she like picking. That's that Mississippi, Alabama coming out of you, Angela. What? 
She likes pickled okra and okra with B E P. I hate okra. Man, let me let me tell you, I grew up in Arkansas and no, all no, and all the people, <laughs> all my people from Arkansas mm-hmm. loved okra. I can't do okra. I can't. I never it. liked okra. I it's never liked worse. my mom, may she rest in peace. My mom loved it, especially fried. No, sir. And she used to make that stuff for me all the time. It's certain things that I eat a lot of stuff. Like I eat raccoon and all that kind of stuff, right? I might eat okra before I eat raccoon. Nah, I eat raccoon first. Yeah. But <laughs> thanks, Kristen. But it, like I man, I ain't gonna I ain't eat no okra and no Brussels sprouts. You can give me a hundred dollars right now and tell me eat some Brussels sprouts. That probably and I'm would not take two to get me to eat it. That Mm-mm. Brussels sprouts are the devil. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I can't have She it. says she bake it and fry hey, I don't care. I don't care if you if you put it in in, in your whatever, you steam it, I'm not gonna eat it. <laughs> Chanel said she bake it and fry it. Nah. She said you can have a raccoon. Raccoon is off the hook. Raccoon off the hook. I'm telling you. No, if you if you eat it barbecue, I haven't had it since I was a little boy. But I I, I had fond memories. My godfather used to make uh, my, uh fried uh, barbecue raccoon growing up. Oh, okay. And you know what? I'm gonna probably do it as a show. I'm gonna probably go out and buy me some rabbit or some raccoon. One of these days, and I'm gonna show. I'm gonna do a video on how to prep some raccoon. No, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I might put that bit that since I got a lot. I might put that uh, that picture up of that raccoon what? on Facebook Man, so people nasty. can see it. Don't put that up there. That was from 2007, and, and believe it or not, in Houston, Texas. And I'm still traumatized by. And my you. my aunt, may she rest in peace. She used to love raccoon, and so she was like, she used to eat, eat like a lot of. Uh, you know, wild stuff because she grew up like on a farm and stuff like that. She's a brave woman. Yeah, but you know what? You know, it is what it is. I, I just, <laughs> you guys, I just, I can't do it. Can't she do said, it. please don't. Right, I, I so, can't. So what's going on right now, baby? So now we're just continuing to let our fruit cook down. So we've got our puree that we added back to it. That's going to add to the concentration of the flavor of it. So good. Now I'm smashing some of the raspberries down. You know, because like I said, we want to have a jam texture, but I'm Love also you too, Crystal. trying to uh, keep incorporated um, pieces. So you're so you're, so you're smashing this down so that the the chunks aren't too heavy, is what you're saying Correct. right now? Yeah, you know, because we don't. I don't really want whole, uh, not raspberries. Lord, you guys help me. I keep saying raspberries, blackberries, blackberries. You guys. That means that you're meant to make something with raspberries <laughs> in it. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, I keep saying that. Um, you know, blackberries and raspberries outside of the color. We gotta get. We gotta give. We gotta give you your uh, bottle, Chanel. You bottle. good people. Yeah, Chanel. Not a bottle, a jar. I'm talking about a bottle, like we. See, that's that moonshine. That's that moonshine. Stuff. That's that moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> that's that moonshine coming out. Have you guys seen that show? Don't they have a show out? Um, what's it called? A hey, what channel is that? You guys, where they actually show like bootleggers. They had a whole show uh, made around that. Did you see it? Anybody see it? Let me know. Moonshiners or bootleggers or something it's called. I don't want to put this family member out like that, but I, 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 I had a family member uh-huh. who would go unnamed who <laughs> uh, made, who made moonshine. Listening. They used to hustle out of their house uh-uh. and do numbers because the county that they lived in, Arkansas, mm-hmm. was a what they call a dry county. And for, for those people that are are not familiar from that. A dry county means that that county does not allow uh, liquor to be sold in that county. No, no alcohol whatsoever. No so, liquor down. So she would sit up and make liquor. Out. <laughs> well, I want to give this up. This person would make liquor out of their house, uh-uh. and people would like <laughs> go to her house and buy the liquor. <laughs> and she was making money. This man. Oh, yes, she did. She was the only. Uh... She said she sent. Uh, Chanel says she sent some pictures to your phone. A moonshine? <laughs> <laughs> she said a moonshine. Man, come on. <laughs> she said a moonshine. Oh, no, you your line it. <laughs> that moonshine spirit. Okay, moonshine. Having big old, uh, having big old uh, brass distilleries. That mess was funny. Mm-hmm. Man, that, yeah. That was so funny. So, so how long is this going to go on for me? So we're almost to where we need to add our pectin just about. I'm just trying to um, work with my blackberries a little bit more, okay? So I'm just trying to work with the texture a bit more. It's real important to take your time to get your fruit uh, where you want it. 
Um, so that way you have the, you know, you have the outcome that you're looking for. So my goal in this is to have a nice chunky jam. You know, I want it to be jam. I want it to be spreadable, like a spreadable fruit, but I want you to have that nice, um, I would want to have like that nice marmalade texture too. So that's why I'm making sure that I smash my blackberries down. Yeah. Anybody, um, anybody have any more questions? Let me know. Tell me now. Going once, going twice. If not, what we'll do is we'll take a break and then in the next video, I can kind of show you where we're at and the results of it. Um, and I'll also show you uh, the last results of our marmalade from the previous video, the orange marmalade, okay? So if you don't have any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and continue with this and then I'll meet back up with you guys uh, at a later time and I'll show you guys what we got. But today's is blackberry lemonade jam. And so, real quick before we end it, the only thing she's going to do after we cook it down is just add the pift add our pectin. and pectin, and that's, that's it. it. And just that's let it, it, and then after you add that, how long does it cook for? Now you're probably going to cook <coughs> it for about, I'll well, probably let it cook for like another 20 minutes. You want to cook it until it gets thick, and that's what you want to do. Okay. And what you'll do is you'll test it. You'll test it out um, to see if it's at the thickness that you want. It should run, but not like be watery. You don't want that watery. It should move, but you want like sort of syrup, like slow. thicker than the syrup, actually. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye.